Boreda, Adiachan Vauriaun, Thomas. Good morning and a very warm welcome to the Cardiff City Stadium for the biggest ever Sport Wales annual conference. This is a Premier League venue for what has now become a Premier event in the sporting calendar. I know that you'll enjoy today. It'll be an opportunity for celebration and conversation, but most importantly for reflection and challenge. My blesser, Edrych o gwmpas a bresenoldeb cymaint o bobl allweddol o ran gwneud penderfyniadau yn y byd chwaraeon yng Nghymru a Cymrydain. Os nad ydych chi wedi deall hynny eisoes, chi yw'r arwainwyr y byddwn ni'n cyfeirio at un nhw heddiw. Mae dyfodol chwaraean yn aeth dwylo chi, cymaint ag y mae yn fynwylo i a phawb ar y llwyfan yma. Byddwn yn pwyslaesio drwy gydol y dydd, mae hyn rydych chi yn ei wneud sy'n bwysig, nid beth rydw i ac eraill yn ei ddweud. Let me begin by welcoming a number of our distinguished guests. I'm personally thrilled that they're joining us today. It's a reflection of our status as a small, smart, successful sporting nation that we have such an impressive array of guests who are keen to join in our conversations about leadership and legacy. Welcome, first of all, to our new Sports Minister, John Griffiths AM. This is the first national address to our sector's leaders, all gathered in one place, that the Minister has given since he was appointed. I've been working very closely with John these past 12 weeks, and there is absolutely no doubt that the Minister is a keen and enthusiastic sportsman. There can be few more passionate advocates for all that is good about sport and physical activity than John. We also welcome Dr Ruth Hussey, Chief Medical Officer for Wales, and her presence underlines the critical connection between our sector and the future health of the nation. And Sir Keith Mills, Chair of Sported UK and formerly Deputy Chair of LOCOG. And finally, of course, and I think he's been slightly delayed, Lord Coe, Olympic and Paralympic Legacy Ambassador, Chair of the BOA and one of our most successful ever Olympians. On behalf of us all in Wales, Lord Coe, our 68 athletes in Team GB, our coaches, support staff and volunteers who were in London, but most of all, on behalf of the Welsh people who were thrilled and proud at the truly amazing success story that was London 2012, Dioch and Vauriaun. From the minute the torch relay crossed into Wales, the public here were captivated by that famous Olympic spirit. The negative naysayers who told me this was a London Games that would only benefit Southern England and would have little impact on sport and physical participation in Wales were quite simply wrong. And because we and our partners were ready with our legacy plans, we have been able to prove them wrong with some impressive early trends in sports participation, and I'll return to that later. But really, we were right in saying this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to showcase sport and to show that success on the world stage could inspire a generation. The Welsh public joined as one to salute our athletes in Team GB. Who could forget the celebrations across every community in Wales when Jade Jones lit up the XL? Even before Jade stepped into the ring for her final match, Flint Social Club had run out of beer. Or when Bridgen's Alid Sean Davis won, uh, did that famous lap of honour in the Olympic Stadium after bagging gold, culminating in a big kiss from his mam. <laughs> or when Tredegar's Mark Colborn won GB's first Paralympic medal. Or when Tom James and Geraint Thomas joined the select band of multi-gold medal Olympians. In this year, of all years, there is only one place to start today's conference, and that is with the success story that is Welsh sport. With our Welsh members of Team GB's record haul of seven Olympic medals and 15 Paralympic medals, Abergavenny's Becky James became the first British cyclist ever to win four medals at a World Track Championships in Belarus, where 18-year-old Eleanor Barker also won gold in the team pursuit and Sam Harrison silver. Wales's four riders in the GB team won two-thirds, yes, two-thirds of the medals won by Great Britain. Just two weekends ago, Wales claimed European netball open gold, beating England in the process, and non Stanford won her maiden, maiden World Triathlon Series title in Madrid. And last weekend, Andrew Selby became the first boxer to successfully defend his European title. 
Let's remind ourselves, this is success on the world stage by a nation the size of the Leeds city region. And to the big sports, Wales are once again Six Nations champions who will forget the defeat or annihilation of England at the millennium in March. 15 members of the Lions squad and the captain in Sam Warburton. And in football, there was a first major trophy for Swansea City, who consolidated their position as a Premier League club. And huge congratulations to Cardiff City, who are joining them next season in the Premier League. So Keith will know that means 10% of the Premier League is Welsh. <laughs> I'll leave the plaudits for Newport County to the Minister, as I know he's a fan, but congratulations on completing that Phoenix from the Ashes story and rejoining the Football League. And we mustn't forget Wrexham's nail-biting FA Trophy success or Gareth Bale's clean sweep of the Player of the Year trophies. That hugely impressive list makes it pretty obvious that we have a very proud heritage of sporting success in Wales. You already know that. Sport is in our blood. It's why we based our vision on uniting a proud sporting nation. But we in sport need to treat the past in the proper manner, as a springboard for the future, not a comfortable sofa on which to recline as we bask in former glories. Our mentality is that of the athlete and the coach. The race, the competition, the match ends when the whistle is blown or the finishing line is crossed. Then it is about more training, more challenge, the quest for improvement, the next competition, and a bar set even higher. We have already set our next challenge, and it is very clearly in our sight. In 401 days' time, Team Wales will be in Glasgow for the start of the 20th Commonwealth Games, another home games in our Celtic neighbours. And after our success at London, we expect another very strong showing from our athletes. And we've set ourselves the hugely ambitious target of being the best performing nation in terms of medals won per capita. That will involve beating Scottish athletes on their home soil and taking on the might of sporting greats from Canada, New Zealand and Australia. But whilst these are tough targets, I hope we'll be ready because you've seen we already punch above our weight. Of the 96 cyclists currently on the UK pathway, 16 are Welsh, 17% of the UK total. In disability athletics, it's a quarter Welsh, and that's with under 5% of the UK population. But let's remember, elite success costs the same, whether you're a big nation or a small nation. And we need to determine how we can get the absolute maximum from our resources in Wales. So I'm delighted that we are seeing greater collaboration at UK level between our institute in Wales and the governing bodies here, because we know that the talent health check system needs to feed further down into our talent system in Wales to continue to produce world-class outcomes. A fine example is Olympic sailor Hannah, Hannah Mills. Many of you will have seen Hannah last year. Hannah came through all of the Welsh sailing systems, received Welsh funding, before progressing onto the UK pathway and winning silver in London 2012. Remember, of the 68 Welsh athletes representing GB at the Olympics and Paralympics, all bar five had come through the talent pathways of Welsh governing bodies, and 80% had benefited from significant contact with our Sport Wales Institute. And for the next cycle of Olympic and Paralympic sport, there are 81 Welsh athletes on the UK pathway, again exceeding our 5% total of population, and approximately 200 athletes on talent initiatives feeding into that. This is Team Wales in action, helping to deliver for GB on the world stage. Rod Carr, the new chair of UK Sport, is with us today, and congratulations to you, Rod, from us all on your recent appointment. Rod knows that I will continue to challenge him and his colleagues at UK Sport for the simple reason that there can be no Team GB without athletes born and raised and developed here in the home nations. And the reason we are so ambitious is because we know we can't stand still in elite sport because others will overtake us. In disability and Paralympic sport, for instance, it will be an extremely tough ask to maintain our current level of success 
but we have a reputation that we are very proud of in Paralympic sport. Nearly 12% of TB, Team GB's medals in London were won by Welsh athletes, and that is a statistic that we want to maintain and improve upon. But Paralympic sport is at its highest ever standard, with more countries taking part, improved structures and, com and competition, younger athletes coming onto the scene, and new technology. It will become ever more difficult to win medals, so we must improve simply to stand still. And I know our leaders in disability sport are already planning for that. But of course, it is not all about performance and success. At a BBC Legacy conference last week, my good friend Tani Gray-Thompson memorably said that post-London, what we need is more people who are rubbish at sport. <laughs> Beautifully expressed, but I know what Tani means. Some of our most successful governing bodies have talked openly about legacy and about the connectivity between elite and community sport. More members, more medals. Those partners which display leadership in all they do have already generated pleasing early legacy results. Gymnastics, 25% growth in membership in the first six months after the Games. Hockey, 32% more clubs. Swimming, nearly 40% more members. Cycling, 24% increase. Girls football, a rise of nearly 40%. These are sports that lead in a strategic, innovative, and dynamic way, developing new versions of their sport that fit people's modern lifestyles, like hockey's 4689 format, netball's trinet, swimming's aqua passport, which utilizes the latest digital technology. In this climate of recession and spending cuts, we know we need to redouble our efforts to sell sport to new markets and to get even more from every Welsh pound invested in the sector. You know only too well the challenges we face, especially in terms of facility development in the current climate. And our local authorities have one of the toughest challenges ever to defend leisure and sport from swinging cuts. Leadership on this agenda will involve collaboration between our local authorities, utilising new partners in the third and private sector, and most of all, innovative thinking, some risk taking, and some tough decisions that might upset some people along the way. But you know, now is precisely the time when we earn our salaries as public leaders. And as we continue our journey to get every child in Wales hooked on sport for life, I have no doubt where our most critical partners lie. They are in the education sector. The first experiences of sport are usually in school. These need to be uniformly positive for girls and for boys, for sporty kids and the less sporty. PE needs to be a priority, elevated in status and integrated into the school day. We need good quantity and excellent quality. Accomplished leaders in education will understand that it is not just about the curriculum but how sport is embedded before and after the school bell rings. The messages from our leaders in the Welsh Government, from head teachers, from ESTIN or directors of education, should leave no doubt that sport and physical activities are essential components in every good school. Many of you know that the Ministerial Task and Finish Group, established by our Minister and the Education Minister and chaired by Baroness Tani Gray-Thompson, will report next week. Its recommendations on school sport will provide a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to address what I regard as the biggest challenges facing the health and well-being of the next generation. I know my colleagues in England are looking enviously at our school's agenda here in Wales, especially at the programme for government commitment to physical literacy being as important as reading and writing. As Michael Gove yearns of a return to prep school style competitive sport in England, we in Wales will continue to strive for school sport that is inclusive and developmental, with quality PE at its heart, delivered by well-trained, motivated and specialist staff. Next week's report should create waves across the whole of the UK, as we show that a smart, small nation like Wales is not afraid of innovation and change. It provides a once-in-a-generation chance to show that we can deliver different solutions in Wales 
and that our priorities are to ensure every child participates in sport and can be the best they possibly can. And as our school sports survey will show, schools are the site for much important leadership and legacy work. Look at the Young Ambassador movement. We are so proud of your efforts. Over 3,000 young people trained to be ambassadors for sport in the past three years. Over 2,000 active young ambassadors who are well represented in everything we do in Sport Wales, including here today. And the reason for that is they are the leaders of the future. Sport has a unique power to truly enrich people's lives. It benefits health and well-being, it promotes social and community cohesion, and it enhances educational attainment. I know that, you know that. The problem is not all of our professional colleagues or fellow citizens share that belief. We all know the sense of well-being, of confidence, of status that comes from sport, the friendships, the fun, the fitness that can be gained. Whatever one's education, I know my best education was on the sports field, where I learned what no university or PhD can teach you. Discipline, teamwork, ambition, perseverance, communication, and most important of all, a winning mentality and learning to deal with failure. I often get asked, how do you find the time to do sport? And for me, it's as essential to my life now as it was when I first got hooked on sport as a small child. So my answer is always the same. I can't not find the time to be active. But I also recognise that not all children have positive experiences of PE or parents who could drive them to club training and competitions on weekends as mine did. When we say sport belongs to all of us, we mean all, regardless of background, regardless of age, gender, class, language, sexuality, ethnicity, religion, disability. I simply do not believe that lower participation among some groups in our society is inevitable. Driving access and equality in sport makes good business sense. It's as simple as that. We want more participants, and we know that some groups are currently turned off sport. They are our targets as we, if we are to make hundreds into thousands. And we expect leadership from you on this agenda. This is not simply a politically correct bolt-on or funding condition. We will not accept lip service to this agenda. As a modern go-ahead sector, we have a duty to make sport inclusive and welcoming to all our fellow citizens. Our pioneering new research with Stonewall Cymru into lesbian, gay and bisexual people's experiences of sport showed that 72% would be more likely to participate in a club if it was more welcoming. That sends a strong message to the sector. There is a captive audience waiting to engage with us if we get it right. Dwi hefyd eisiau defnyddio pŵer chwraeon i ddatblygu defnydd o'r iaith Gymraeg ac i'r gwrthwyneb. Rydyn ni'n gwybod drwy ein gwaith gyda'r urdd yn arbennig bod posib i chwraean fod yn gweithgaredd ar ôl ysgol mwyaf sy'n cael plant i siarad Cymraeg unwaith maen nhw wedi gadael yr ystafell ddosbarth. Fe hoffan i'ch gweld eich cwestiynau materion mynediad a chyd roddoldeb yn eich sefydliad chi ac yn gofyn i chi eich hun, beth rydych chi yn ei wneud i roi sylw iddyn nhw. This conference is all about leadership. So let me offer a personal take on the theme after three years in this room. For me, vision is the key, along with the less glamorous hard work, perseverance, and a dogged determination, of course. Being a leader in sport is not about being popular. It's not about being liked. It is about being clear what is best for the organization and the people you serve and doing the right thing at the right time, however tough that is. It is about being ambitious and not doing what has always been done. If sport was in perfect shape, yes, but we all know there is serious and significant work still to be done. It is about being yourself and recognizing your strengths and weaknesses. We all hope we're in the right jobs to enact real change and progress, but our faces won't fit forever. We must recognize our own shelf lives and be prepared to change, to shift emphasis, and sometimes plain and simply to move on. Precipitating renewal 
is as important a leadership skill as anything else. Don't take yourselves too seriously, but take the mission very seriously indeed. As we recruit our new Chief Executive for Sport Wales, I struggle to think of a better job at this time. And yes, of course, I'm biased. Forget salaries and kudos. This is a proper sports job, a real challenge for an ambitious and driven person. Someone who can meet the huge aspirations of a small country where sport courses through our veins, where everyone from an eight-year-old in the school playground to an 80-year-old woman at the bingo has a view on Malky Mackay's transfer targets, Warren Gatlin's selection, or Di Green's form. And I've consistently said that we cannot ask you to change if we do not first embrace change ourselves. We've had some notable success in strengthening our board leadership, including a more diverse profile across both sexes, a better age range and different professional experiences. We've been much lauded for four out of five of our new board recruits being women. But in the spirit of continuous improvement, I'm conscious that we cannot rest on our laurels. We have to build on this progress to further improve and diversify the leadership of sport in Wales. The drive must always be for decision making to better reflect the people we serve. Because Minister, you know as well as I do, it is not you or the Welsh Government to which we are ultimately, ultimately answerable, it is the people of Wales. We are their servants and it is against their sporting expectations and aspirations that we will be judged. Igloi. Mae etifeddiaeth yn gysyniad byw ond bydd ysbrydoliaeth gemau Llundain yn mynd nawr. Rydyn ni'n ffodus bod gennyn ni Glasgow rownd y cornel i gadw'r fflam yng nghyn. Mae'r her i ni yn un chwyldroadol. Rydyn ni'n chwilio am newid mewn ymddygiad, newid mewn meddylfryd a dwylliant, ble mae bod yn egniol yn rhan mor allweddol o nid dwylliant ni a bod yn oelwyr. Oddi ar y sofa ac ar y cae, dyna y dyn cri ni. But we have to lead. I want every one of you to leave here today with a personal pledge to redouble your efforts to help change our nation for the better. There is no room for passengers in our vision for sport. Wales's success on the sporting stage has made us a nation known worldwide for its sports stars, but our history has also left a negative mark on our standards of health, well-being and economic power. It is our job to show the leverage of sport for the deep-seated challenges that we face as a nation. Sport and physical activity can drive health and education improvements. Hence, we come to our partners in health and education with an offer that is attractive, appealing, and most importantly, cost-effective. My challenge to the leaders in these sectors is to add your considerable weight and influence to what we are already doing. Like any team, together we can achieve. Alone and apart, our influence is much less. So join us in our ambitions for every child to be hooked on sport for life. That is an educational and a health intervention of real value and permanent impact. And what's more, it is your duty as much as it is ours. Let's finish where we started with Team Wales. But it's not just about our athletes or our coaches or the Commonwealth Games next year. Team Wales can become the mantra for us all as our small nation becomes a beacon for collaboration in physical activity, education and health, and a world beater not only on the competitive stage, but in every aspect of sport, from the playground to the podium. Diolch yn